In our study of Psalm 119, we come now to the letter Psalmic, beginning in verses uh, 113 and going, or verse 113, and going to verse 120. 113 reads, Say Afim, Saneti the Torah Ahavti. I hate those that are divided, those that are half hearted, but your law I love. Notice as we look at this verse, first of all, he expresses his disdain for those that are half hearted when it comes to the Lord. Se'ef is the noun and uh, or the adjective and uh, se'afim im is the plural, masculine plural of the adjective se'ef and it means half hearted it can also mean double minded those who <coughs> basically uh, are maybe in outwardly act as though they intend to love the Lord's Torah, but they don't practice it or do it. It is interesting, the same phraseology or the same uh, word or root occurs in 1 Kings 18 when uh, Elijah, remember, asks the question, why are you halting between two opinions? If Yahweh be Yah, Lord, the Lord, worship Him, and so forth. So, what the Lord doesn't want is half-heartedness in a devotion to Him. And so the psalmist says, Saneti, I hate those that are half-hearted, spiritually speaking. Saneti is from the root Sane, which means uh, to hate, uh, or dislike strongly. Notice it is a cal perfect first common singular with the T affix or suffix. <coughs> and one of the things that I think can be said from this is that the Lord doesn't like insipid worship. In the book of the uh, Revelation, the third church of Laodicea, is neither hot nor cold, and the church is lukewarm, half-hearted. And so the Lord said, I will spew you out of my mouth. One of the tragedies is half-hearted religion, or half-hearted as Christians, Christianity, or devotion to Christ. And So the psalmist is expressing a, an opinion against half-heartedness, and then he goes on to say, But, and the Vav here is probably a contrasted use of the Vav. Your Torah, Torah is from Torah, meaning law or instruction. And notice the Ha is the second masculine singular pronominal suffix. So your law, I love. I love your instruction. Ahavti is from the root ahav, meaning to love. And notice it's the cow perfect first common singular from ahav. So here we have a contrast. He doesn't want to be among those that just have a half-hearted attitude toward the Lord's instruction. He doesn't want to identify with that but he wants to be among those that have a deep love for the instruction of the Lord. And that is something that, as Christians, we need to love the Lord's Word. <coughs> to have a real relationship with it, wanting to study it. We live in a day and time of biblical illiteracy. And it's very sad that often, even in evangelical churches, we've lost the love for the Lord's instruction and for the Lord's Torah. And so this becomes an encouragement to a Christian reader to apply this to his or her life, to have a real love for the Lord's Word. 
and to spend time in it, to meditate on it. Let the Word mold us and change us. And so he goes on and he says, uh, Sitri umagini ata lidvaracha yichalti. You are a shelter and a shield, or my shield. You are my shelter, I should say, my hiding place and my shield. In your word do I hope. Notice very, very uh, wonderful emphasis upon what the word is to him and what the word does. The word is his hiding place or his shelter. Sitri is a noun, masculine singular, from seter, followed by the hirikyod, the pronominal suffix, onto the noun. And so, my shelter, my hiding place, and my shield. Notice the the word for shield, uh, magain, and again we have the pronominal suffix, first common singular in the e. So my shield, ata, you are. Very emphatic here. Personal pronoun, second masculine singular. So the psalmist is telling the Lord that he finds him to be his hiding place and his shelter as he spends time in his Torah, in his word. And because the Lord is his shelter, he's able to go to the word and hope and wait on the Lord. Notice, Lid Baracha Yichalta, or Yichalti. Uh, Lid varacha is from the root uh, davar, meaning word, and then the lamed is a inseparable preposition of the lamed. To your word, ha is the suffix again, second masculine singular. I wait or I hope. The root here is yachal, to wait for or to hope for. And it is the PL perfect first common singular in the T affix or suffix from the root yahal, to wait for or to hope for. <laughs> Notice the Lord is his shelter. And the Lord needs to be our shelter. The Lord needs to be our shield. It's his person. And as Christians, That is the way we should respond to the Lord Jesus Christ, that He is a shelter to us, that He is a shield to us who who believe in Him as our Lord, as our Savior. And it's in the Word that He finds that assurance. And so He's able to hope. And so He says, in your Word do I hope or I wait. I'm, I'm intensely waiting because I find you to be that hiding place (coughs) and shelter. In the time of storm, we need a shelter. We need a place to go into. And that is what the Lord is to us. And so the Word provides that assurance. And so the psalmist is saying, as I meditate on your Word, I find my shelter and shield to be you, Lord. And so again, uh, when we read this as followers of Christ, we need to see that He has said that He'll always be with us. Nothing can ever sever us from His love in Romans chapter 8. And He's promised, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age in Matthew chapter 28. (laughs) So we have a shield. We have a hiding place in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Word is what we hope in, to to have that assurance. So we need to spend time in the Word in order to uh, have that assurance re-emphasized to us. 
And then he goes on in 115, Suru mimeni mireim, the etzera mitzvat Elohai. Depart from me, O evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. <laughs> Notice suri is from the root sur, meaning to depart. And here we have a cow imperative, second masculine singular from sur. Mimeni is the preposition men. Notice the noon of that preposition has assimilated into the mim, the second mim. And the n is a hinge, taking us then to the pronominal suffix uh, ni, or e. So depart from me, first person singular pronominal suffix. Depart from me, mereim. O you evildoers. Uh, Mereim is from the root ra'a. It's a double ayin root. It is a hyphial participle, masculine plural. And so he doesn't want to be around or hang around those that are going to do evil. But he wants to be free from that influence to really be able to keep the commandments of the Lord. Uh, One of the things that we need to always do, and that is to move close to the the Lord and uh, away from any evil doing or participation or hanging out, so to speak, with those that are not bent on following Christ and following the Lord. And so he goes on in the next verse, the etzera mitzvot Elohai. In order that, the vav here is a vav of purpose, and etzera is from the root natsar, it's a penun verb, And notice the noon has assimilated into the tzate here. That happens in the penun verbs, and we have that dogish forte indicating a doubling, hence an assimilation of the noon. So he says that I may keep. The aleph gives it away as a first person. So it's a a cow imperfect first person singular from natsar, with the ah emphatic uh, ending here, that I may keep mitzvot is from mitzvah, meaning commandment. And the od makes it a feminine plural from mitzvah, that I, in order that I may keep the commandments of my God. Elohai is from Elohim, and in construct, it becomes Elo, and then we Elo with the final He, and we add the Pathak Yod. And the Pathak Yod, the Pathak in that construction, the Pathak changes to a comma in this final position, this final pausal position. So, <laughs> depart from me, evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God were to abhor that which is evil and were to cling to that which is good. And so were to want to keep the commandments of the Lord, what He has taught, uh, and with all of our heart and soul. And I like when He says, My God. It's very personal here. He has a personal relationship with the Lord. And in order to really keep his commandments, we also need that personal relationship with the Lord as Christians, with our Lord Jesus Christ. He will say, if you love me, keep my commandments. And uh, I'm reminded of Thomas in John 20, after the resurrection, who says this great statement, my Lord and my God. And so the John 
in the book of John, the Gospel of John, wants us to say the same thing concerning Jesus, who is our Lord. And as a result, if we love Him, we want to keep His commandments. We want to do what He has said in fellowship uh, with Him by keeping His Word, His commandments. In 1 John 1, if we say we have fellowship with Him and do not keep His commandments, John says we're not telling the truth. We lie and do not the truth. So it's important that we love the Lord and shun that which is evil in order to keep His commandments. And then in the next verse, 116, uh, it reads, Sum cheni chayim ratacha ve'echye ve'al tebisheni misivri Sustain me according to your word that I may live and do not put me not to shame from my hope. Notice as we look at this great text, uh, this great verse, Somcheni is from the root Samach and it is a cow imperative second masculine singular from samak meaning to sustain here we have the helping vowel with the tseri and the pronominal suffix in the in the e so sustain me uh, and then according to your word again notice According to your word, I'm able to be supported. And he is just your inseparable preposition. Imratacha is from imra, meaning word or saying. And in construct, it becomes imrat, with the pronominal suffix second masculine singular. So, according to your word, that I may live. That is the conjunction here looking, no doubt, at purpose. And so we could translate it that, in order that, I may live. Echye is the cow imperfect first person singular. Notice the Aleph giving that away from the root Chaya, to live. So he's asking the Lord to sustain him, to support him according to your word, he's saying, so sustain me according to your word that I may live. And can we say the word of God is living, it's alive, it's powerful, and any two-edged sword, we're told in Hebrews chapter 4. So as we spend time in the word of God, it gives us life. It quickens us. And so... As a result, we find support there. And that's what the psalmist is saying. And do not put me to shame in my hope. That is simply the conjunction N. Al is the negative particle meaning not. And tevisheni. Notice tevisheni is from the root bosh, to be ashamed. It's a biradical root. And... uh, (coughs) Here we have a hifil, uh, imperfect, and its second masculine singular from the root bosh with the pronominal suffix in the ni. So, do not put me to shame uh, in my or from my hope. Notice the men, the noon, has assimilated into the scene and that doggy shows that men uh, assimilating becoming the doubling uh, causing the doubling of the scene by that progressive assimilation and the word hope is simply the noun here uh, from sever meaning to hope and the E is the pronominal suffix, first common singular. 
So my from my hope, do not put me to shame from my hope. In other words, uphold me, uh, sustain me according to your word that I can find life and don't let me be ashamed from the hope that it gives me. I'm reminded of Romans chapter 5 as a Christian it is interesting that Paul says that we have been justified we have peace with God and that peace and then the hope that we have as a result of it uh, sustains us and we can know that that hope will not be put to shame because the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit who becomes that internal witness when we know the Lord Jesus as Savior and he witnesses through the word and it sustains us and it get, and, and it causes us to have life and we know that our hope will not be put to shame because not only has the Lord already done the more difficult task, Paul says, of rescuing us while we were at odds with him, his enemies, but now as friends he sustains us through the indwelling testimony of the Spirit of God as he takes the Word of God and in our hearts tells us that we will not be put to shame in what we have believed. So then as we go on in 117, Sa'adeni the Ivashia the Esh the Hukecha Tamid support me or sustain me. The root here is Sa'ad and it means to sustain or support it is a cow imperfect second masculine singular. Notice the helping vowel and the tseri and the noon, the hinge, getting us to the pronominal suffix in the e, first person singular. So sustain me or support me, and I shall be saved. Notice the ve is simply a vav connective conjunction and the ivashaya is from the root uh, yasha to say notice we have an i in the aleph or under the aleph the hirik followed by an a class vowel and we have a doubling in the shuri and here we we know that a noon has assimilated in Vashaya becoming Ivvashaya. So this is a nifal, <laughs> imperfect, first common singular from the root Yasha and with the Ha intensive uh, suffix. It is in, uh, or, or affix to it, I should say. It is interesting that the root Yasha was historically Vasha a pe-vav verb. These pe-yod verbs came from two origins, some from a pe-vav origin, others from a pe- uh, or from a pe-yod. Like yinak is historically uh, a pe-yod verb, like he will uh, give uh, suck, let's say. Uh, like looking at an animal feeding its young. But on the other hand, or he will, she will give shuck, a suck. A, 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 uh, we would have that uh, same root of a female uh, animal giving its young nourishment. But yasha, meaning to save, is from vasha historically. So it was a pe-vav verb. All of these went to peyot verbs, and now... In this nifal imperfect, the pevab reappears, or the vab reappears. So, that I shall be saved, and then I shall occupy myself. The esha, the chukecha tamid. I shall occupy myself, or literally, I shall gaze 
in your statutes continually. The root uh, here, sha'a, means to gaze. Gaze steadily with the, with the desire to regard it, to do it. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, verb here. It is the cow imperfect first common singular from sha'a to gaze uh, or to regard and the aleph puts it into the first person the aleph prefix and again the vav is just your vav conjunction so sustain me (laughs) according to your word and I shall live in the previous verse and now sustain me in 117 uh, or support me, sustain me, that I shall be saved. I need your help. It's your word that gives me the hope that you will save me, the psalmist is saying. And by giving life to me, and by helping me with your salvation, then I want this, that, as a result... I shall occupy myself, or literally gaze steadily into your statutes. Notice that is the preposition in. Uh, the word for statue is hok, and hukecha. Notice hukim is the plural for statue. And here it's in construct, plural, masculine, in hukech. The sigol yod, followed by the cha, your pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. So that I might gaze steadily into your statutes continually, into your carved out regulations, but not just momentarily, but tami. Here we have the adverb meaning continually. What a beautiful, beautiful verse. He wants to be uh, supported by the Lord, sustained, and to be saved. Saved with life and health and strength, that I might occupy myself, literally might gaze continually or steadily in your statutes. And may it be continually. What a beautiful, beautiful thought here. He wants to gaze with the idea of regarding what his statutes are to do them. (laughs) May it be that we love the Lord's word and from our heart of hearts we want to spend our days and nights gazing into it continually. I'm reminded of Psalm 1. B'torat Adonai Chepso in, in, in the Torah of the Lord is the godly man's delight. And in his Torah, <coughs> he meditates day and night, continually. And so here is a plea for the Lord to sustain the psalmist and to save him so that he would have life and health and strength to spend his time gazing into the statutes of the Lord day and night, continually. And that's what we should pray for as followers of Christ, as Christians, that we can be sustained through the Word of God and that we can be saved from it or by it, that we not only are saved eternally, through our faith in the Lord Jesus that the Word teaches us concerning, but also saved in our life, having a life of meaningfulness that we can gaze continually into the Lord's statutes with a desire of doing them, of regarding them. That should be what our passion uh, should be about as followers of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in 118, uh, he continues, Salita kol shogim mehukecha ki sheker tar mitam. Notice, you 
have made light of all those that err from your statutes. For their deceit is sheker, is vain. Notice, as we look at this <coughs> text, you have made light. Actually, the root is salah. It's a lamad he, a final he verb. Notice the he has, uh, here is replaced by the yod because at one time the lamad he verbs were, were lamad yod verbs. And the yod reappears here again in this second person singular. This is just your cow <laughs> perfect uh, second person singular, masculine, from the root salah, to make light. And so you've made light of all, notice kol, of all who err, of the totality of those, the noun followed by shogim, all of those who err. Notice shogim is from shaga, a lamad he verb again, and this is just your cow participle with the O-class vowel followed by the im, masculine plural. So you have made light of all those who are erring from your statutes. Notice the mem here is just the mem uh, preposition. The noon has alighted, so we have compensatory lengthening from a hirik to a tseri under the mem. And hok is the noun meaning statue. And huke, hukecha again, uh, notice again, in the plural masculine construct, we have here the noun with the pronominal suffix second masculine singular. So they, uh, you have made light of all of those that err from your statutes, for their deceit is vain. Notice a lie or a falsehood, a deception. For is just your conjunction, key. Sheker is the noun that means deception, uh, or, or the noun that means a lie, or that which is a falsehood. And uh, the next noun <coughs> following that is tarmitam, from tarmit, meaning deceitfulness. For their deceitfulness is that which is vain, that which is false, that which is not true, I think he's saying. And tarmitam is a noun in tarmit, meaning deceitfulness, noun feminine, followed by the pronominal suffix, uh, third masculine plural in the am. For their deceit is vain. Notice uh, this verse that the psalmist is saying the Lord has makes light <coughs> of all those who willingly err from his statute. It is important to have the Lord take note of our lives rather than considering it uh, something that has little meaning. And I think to depart and to err from the Lord's statute, statutes causes the Lord to make light of that. That is not something that he honors, that he lifts up, that he responds in a, in a very in a positive way toward. I think this is what the psalmist is saying, uh, and their deceitfulness is really vain. That is, it's there, those who move away from the Lord's word and who maybe lead others astray, their views and what they teach prove to be nothing. Uh, they prove to have no value. I think this is what the Lord is saying. And uh, if we look at the New Testament, perhaps in addressing the Gnostics, Second Peter, 
would be, especially chapter 2, a book that would affirm a text like this. Uh, Peter says people who deny the truth concerning Christ, uh, at, especially the Gnostics, were like wells without water or clouds that don't bring rain. And so the emphasis throughout Scripture is that deceitfulness, if it goes away and errs from the Lord's statute, is vain. It's not lasting. It doesn't bring any any rain. It appears to be something, but it doesn't produce. I think this is the idea. And then as he goes on in 119... Notice Sigim Hishbatak Chol Rishe Aretz Lachain Ahafti Edotecha. You have caused to cease the dross in all of those who are the wicked of the earth. Or we could translate it as, as dross understood. You cause to cease all the wicked ones of the earth. Therefore, I love your testimonies. Erutecha. Notice, uh, sigim is from the noun sig, same kirigyod gimel, and it's the plural here in the im. And so, uh, dross, like dross, you have cause to cease. And the root here is from Shabbat. It's the hifil, uh, perfect, second masculine singular, from Shabbat, to cause to cease. And notice the hay gives it gives it away as a hifil, and uh, the ta is your pronominal suffix second, or, or your, your suffix to the root. I'm sorry. Shabbat is the verb to cause to cease. Actually, it's where we get uh, the, the, the noun Shabbat. And the he prefix puts it into the hifil with the I class vowel, and so it's a hifil perfect second masculine singular from Shabbat. And so you cause to cease, as understood, draws. All, kol is just your uh, noun, meaning the, all of the totality of, it's in construct, with rishe aretz. Rishe is from the noun rasha all the wicked ones in, in here are, are from the adjective uh, rasha, the wicked ones. Notice that seriod is your masculine plural suffix uh, or, or masculine plural adjective in construct with adits. So all the wicked ones of the earth you cause to cease as dross. You put away. The idea here is that of a uh, refiner of gold who is purging away the uh, dross to get to that which is pure. And so the Lord does that. He purges away uh, those who are going to practice evil and wickedness to get to the pure, to the gold. That's the emphasis that he's... uh, emphasizing here and therefore he doesn't want to be part of that purging he said therefore I love your testimonies I don't want to be judged by the Lord I think is the thought here that the Lord is going to refine uh, us our lives and he wants that refining process to be positive rather than the Lord's uh, negative judgment on him. So he says, therefore, lachain, wherefore, I love. Ahavti is the cow perfect first common singular from ahav. Uh, and 
at following the conjunction therefore, we then have Edotecha. Uh, Eda means testimony in the singular, and Edot is the feminine plural in construct with its seriyod here with ha, the pronominal suffix second masculine singular. So I love your testimonies because I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be purged uh, like a part of that purging process in the final judgment, I think the psalmist is saying. I want to love your testimony and I want to spend time in it with that devotion to you. And that should be our heart um, as we serve the Lord. We want to serve Him with a, with a pure heart. Uh, Paul speaks of the final judgment in which our life is going to be tested even among those who are ministers for Christ. And it will be either wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stones. We don't want to be the wood, hay, and stubble. We don't want to have the dross purged away. Uh, We want the dross purged away, but we don't want it in the final judgment. We want to come out as, as gold by being obedient to the Lord. I think that is Paul's point in 1 Corinthians And the same similar thought is here. So he does not want the Lord to purge his life uh, and to face his judgment in this refining process. So he loves the Lord's testimonies and he wants to do them, fulfill them in his life. And then finally, 120, Samar mepachtecha vesari. My flesh bristles up, shudders for fear of of you, for uh, your fear, that is for the terror of the final judgment. My flesh bristles up and I am afraid of your judgments. Notice Samar is just your cow perfect, third masculine singular from Samar. And it means to bristle up or to something like to shudder uh, with uh, a, a fear, a godly fear. And Mepachtecha is from Pachad, meaning fear. And notice the noon of the min has assimilated into the pa, into the pi here, or the, or the phi. Uh, and the cha is your pronominal suffix, second masculine singular. And then uh, basar is the noun for flesh. And vesari is the noun in construct with the pronominal suffix in the hirikyod, first person singular. So my my flesh shudders, bristles up in contemplation of your judgment. For he said, I am afraid of your judgments. Notice U is just the conjunction and, and the uh, men, uh, the noon has assimilated again into the second mem. And we have a doggish forte. And the first mem is simply your preposition. And then mishpatecha is from mishpat, meaning judgment. And notice that the sigol yod puts it into the plural construct with the pronominal suffix second masculine singular in the cha. So, I am afraid of your judgments. Yareti is from the root yara, or yare, to be afraid. And notice it's a cow perfect first person singular from Yare. And so I am afraid from your judgments. One of the things that the psalmist is, is picturing here is that he doesn't want to be part 
of the judgment that will come upon those who depart from the Lord and from His truth. And so he shudders in fear because he doesn't want that judgment upon him. Uh, he's afraid of the final judgment. And and Paul will talk about, you know, because of the, the, the fear of the Lord and the final judgment, we are preaching to you in 2 Corinthians 5 to be reconciled to the Lord. One of the things we've lost today, and we see it even in the church, uh, as in the Christian church a lot of times, that we've lost sight of the godly fear of the Lord and the final judgment that we're going to be examined someday. And it seemed that Christians some years ago had a healthy idea of the judgment of God and today, in the average situation, there's no feeling of God's judgment or no fear of it at all. Uh, and we do need to focus on the love of God, but we should never forget there is also the judgment of the Lord. And we need to have our lives then in obedience to Christ and His Word and to who He is and love Him and as Christians and know Him and want to follow Him because there is the reality of a future day of judgment. And not and have a godly fear while we also know that He loves us and that nothing <coughs> can sever us from His love. We must also uh, understand that there is a, a godly fear that is healthy <coughs> and not simply live as though that doesn't exist. And so this is the psalmist's words here, and I think application to us as we, as believers in Jesus Christ, look at our Lord. We need to have a healthy uh, fear that leads to obedience to Him and to Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior. I would like just now to give a quick summary of Psalmic and the, te- the passages that we just looked at in terms of what we learn from it. We learn that uh, the psalmist says he loves the Lord's word and he doesn't want to identify with those that are double-minded or half-hearted. He wants to be wholehearted in his love for the Torah. He realizes that the Torah, the Word of God, uh, teaches him and gives him hope so that in it he finds the Lord as his refuge, as his shelter. And then, as he continued, he does not want to identify with those that do wrong, but he wants to keep the commandments of the Lord that he can live and have life and life we could say more abundantly, and he does not want to be put to shame because of any kind of disobedience. And so he asks the Lord to support him so that he can be saved and constantly gaze steadily into the statutes of the Lord to occupy day and night in the Word of God. And he says the Lord... Uh, He doesn't want to identify with those that are deceitful because the Lord does not honor those that err from his statute and from his testimonies, his statutes. And to actually to, to follow deception in erring from the Lord is, is to lead to nowhere. It's vain. And so he concludes by saying, I don't want to put my life in that which will turn uh, to dross, uh, the life of the wicked, of those that practice evil. I want to put my life and fulfill it by loving the Lord's testimonies. And I want to have a godly fear. Actually, I bristle up with fear 
when I think of the Lord's judgment. And I think it's a good fear that he's talking about at the last judgment. And so he wants to live his life with a love for the Word, not in any kind of hypocritical attitude and uh, identifying with its pursuit, gazing steadily into it, and not following the path of disobedience from it. May that be our love and calling uh, those who follow Jesus and who are followers of the way of Christ to meditate on the Word of God, to get to know Him in a deeper way, to know that He becomes our shield and our protector and that through our faith in Christ, nothing can ever sever us, as Paul says in Romans chapter 8, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.